Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Pearson, your elementary ELL teacher. Today we're going to focus on chapter seven, Bud Not Buddy, and the imagery and comprehension question for that chapter. So you need to have already read and or followed along the chapter seven of Bud Not Buddy to do this lesson. And for this lesson, you will need a piece of paper and a pencil. So if you don't have a piece of paper, push pause, get your paper and pencil so that you can um, participate fully in the lesson. And when you're ready, push play. At the end of this lesson, you're going to challenge yourself and work your brain and answer these com this comprehension question for chapter seven. It says 13, Bud gives a lengthy description of the smell of the library. What imagery does he use? Why does Bud focus so much attention on the library? So for this question, there are several parts and I've given you sentence frames to answer each part of the question. So let's get started and read our learning target and success criteria. So our learning target is I can use pictures and context clues to help me understand descriptive language like imagery and idioms for chapter seven of Bud Not Buddy. Our second learning target is I can analyze and write about the descriptive language in the text. And that will be when you answer the comprehension question I just read you. Success criteria. That means how will you know you're successful at reaching these two learning targets? Well, we're gonna take it step by step. So just follow along. I will, number one, we're going to read and or listen and follow along to different parts of the chapter. And then number two, for each slide, you're going to write down one or two examples of descriptive language for each slide that I show you. And descriptive language is the imagery of our five senses. And then three, we're going to answer the comprehension question in writing using those descriptive language examples that you already wrote down. So if we follow it step by step, by the time we get to the question, you will have already answered most of it. So. In chapter seven and the whole book, Bud uses a lot of figurative language when he talks. Now, figurative language versus literal language, examples are below. Figurative language, if you look at this man, you could say he ran like the wind, meaning he, he's comparing, they're comparing the, the way he ran to how the wind is. Literal language would be he ran fast. Imagery is the use of descriptive language. It gives you an image to appeal to the five senses. And our five senses are sight, what does it look like? Smell, what does it smell like? Touch, what does it feel like? Taste, what can you taste? Can you taste something? Or, and sound, what do you hear? So again, you're going to read and listen to parts of chapter seven where Bud um, describes the library using imagery and descriptive language. And then write down, you're going to write down one to two examples of imagery for each slide. And then finally, three, you will have three to six imagery and descriptive language examples to answer the comprehension question. All right, again, imagery is the use of descriptive language. It gives you an image to appeal to our five senses. And again, our five senses are sight. What does it, what does it look like? Smell, what does it smell like? Touch, what does it feel like? Taste, what does it taste like? And sound, what does it sound like? Or what can you hear? So again, Bud's library imagery, we're going to read and follow along to this page together. So I'm gonna to read it out loud, listen closely. 
And Bud said, as soon as I got into the library, I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. I got a whiff of the leather of all the old books, a smell that got real strong if you picked one of them up and stuck your nose real close to it when you turned the pages. Then there was a smell of cloth that covered the brand new books, the books that made a splitting sound when you opened them. When I could, then I could sniff the paper, that soft, powdery, drowsy smell that comes off the pages in little puffs when you're reading something or looking at some pictures, a kind of hypnotizing smell. All right, so if you followed along, you should have seen or heard or smelled some of his imagery that he uses. I'm going to read it one more time because you're going to write down up to two or three examples. So I'm going to read it again. As soon as I got into the library, I closed my eyes and took a deep breath. I got a whiff of the leather on all the old books, a smell that got real strong if you picked one of them up and stuck your nose real close to it when you turned the pages. Then there was the smell of the cloth that covered the brand new books the books that made a splitting sound when you opened them. Then I could sniff the paper, that soft, powdery, drowsy smell that comes off the pages in little puffs when you're reading something or looking at some pictures, a kind of hypnotizing smell. So now you're going to take your pencil and you're going to answer this question or you're going to write so what did the library smell like? And you're going to use this sentence frame. It smells like, what does the library smell like? It smells like, so I want you to write that sentence frame down. It smells like, and then can you remember at least one example of what it smells, smelled like? So if you, I want you to push pause, write it smells like, and then finish that, that sentence. And I want you to come up with at least one to two examples of what it smells like. What did Bud say? So push pause, write that sentence, complete it, and then push play to join me again. And also, what did it sound like? And you can say, it sounds like, so once again, push pause, write, it sounds like, and complete that sentence and give me one to two examples. And when you're done, push play again. So here, here is one example of imagery. It smells like old leather books. Bud said the library smells like old leather books. So if you didn't get that, you could write that down. It smells like old leather books. It smells like new cloth books. It smells like paper. And the paper is soft, powdery, and drowsy. That soft, powdery, drowsy smell. And also, it smells hypnotizing. So remember, he said it's a hypnotizing smell. And the sound, it sounds like splitting the splitting sound when opening a new book, like cracking open a new cloth book. So if you didn't get at least one to two examples of what the library smells like and sounds like, push pause and choose two of these examples. And then when you're ready, after you've written them down, push play again. All right, we're gonna talk more about the library imagery. So we're gonna read and follow along on this page. I'm gonna read it twice. I think it's the, that smell that makes so many folks fall asleep in the library. You'll see someone turn a page and you can imagine a puff 
of page powder coming up really slow and easy until it starts piling on the person's eyelashes, weighing their eyes down so much that they stay down a little longer after each blink and finally making them so heavy that they just don't come back up at all. Then their mouths come open and their heads start bouncing up and down like they're bobbing in a big tub of water for apples. And before you know it, whoop, zoop, sloop, they're out cold and their face thunks down smack dab on the book. That's a lot of imagery to take in, so I'm going to read it again. I think it's that smell that makes so many folk, folks fall asleep in the library. You'll see someone turn a page and you can imagine a puff of page powder coming up really slow and easy until it starts piling on the person's eyelashes, weighing their eyes down so much that they stay down a little longer after each blink and finally making them so heavy that they just don't come back up at all. Then their mouths come open and their heads start bouncing up and down like they're bobbing in a big tub of water for apples. And before you know it, whoop, zoop, sloop, they're out cold and their face thunks down, smack dab in on the book. So let's think. What was the smell? How did he describe the smell of the library? What did you see in the library? How did he describe what you see in the library? And what do you feel when you're in the library? And again, what do you see? So I want you to pick one of those and say, and write it down, push pause, write, the smell is like, or you see, or you feel. Push pause, write one of those sentence frames, and finish it. What did, how did Bud describe the smell of the library, what you see, or what you feel? So the smell, check your work, and if you didn't get one, um, choose one to write that I give you. The smell makes you drowsy until you fall asleep. He said it's a smell that makes you fall asleep. And you see a puff of page powder. You see a puff of page powder in the library. And what do you feel? You feel the powder that is heavy on your eyelids. Remember, it says the powder starts piling up on your eyelids and weighing it down. And then you see again, heads bouncing like they're bobbing for apples. So push pause and I want you to choose one to two of these examples. The smell makes you drowsy until you fall asleep. You see a puff of page powder or you feel the powder that is heavy on the eyelashes, or you see again heads bouncing like they're bobbing for apples, and then they're out cold, smack down on the book. So if you need to, push pause and choose one to two of these, sen these sentences that describe the library. And then once you're done writing them down, push play again. Here's our last page for library imagery. So you're going to read and follow along on this page together. Again, I'm going to read it twice, and then we're going to write about it. That's the part that gets the librarians the maddest. They get real upset. They get real upset if folks start drooling in the books. And page powder or not, they don't want to hear no excuses. You got to get out. Drooling in the books is even worse than laughing out loud in the library. And even though it might seem kind of mean, you can't really blame the librarians for tossing drooly folks out because there's nothing worse than opening a book and having the pages all stuck together from somebody's dried up slobber. So he talks a lot about people drooling in the books and how it makes the librarians mad. 
So I'm going to read it one more time and then we're going to write down some of Bud's imagery. That's the part that gets the librarians the maddest. They get real upset if folks start drooling in the books. And page powder or not, they don't want to hear no excuses. You gotta get out. Drooling in the books is even worse than laughing out loud in the library. And even though it might seem kind of mean, you can't really blame the librarians for tossing drooly folks out because there's nothing worse than opening a book and having the pages all stuck together from somebody's dried up slobber. All right, so what might you see in the library according to Bud? What might you see? You might see, so write that down, that sentence frame. Push pause, write that sentence frame. You might see, and then finish your thought. All right, once you uh, write down that sentence and finish it, you have pushed play and check your work. You might see mad librarians because they get real upset. You might see people drooling in the books. You might see librarians tossing out drooly people. And you might see pages stuck together from dried slobber. So push pause and check your work. And if you don't have any of these examples, write one to two of them down. You might see mad librarians. You might see people drooling in the books. You might see librarians tossing out the drooly people. Or you might see pages stuck together from dried up slobber. And once you've done uh, writing that down, push play again and join the lesson. All right, it is that time. Using all the imagery that we wrote down, we're going to answer chapter seven comprehension question. So now's your time to shine and show me what you learned and answer this question using the sentence frames I gave you. Bud gives a lengthy description of the smell of the library. What imagery does he use? Why does Bud focus so much attention on the library? So for the first part of the question, you can use this, this sentence frame. To describe the library, Bud uses several ex images like, and after that first black sentence frame, you put in your first example that you've already written down. So you're rewriting your examples into this, um, into this sentence frame. To describe the library, Bud uses several images like, and then put in your first example. And then for the red sentence, he also describes the library as, and then put in your second example. So this is a good time to push pause, write down your first sentence frame, and put in your first example, that's the black sentence, and then write the second sentence frame, the red sentence, um, and put in your second example. And when you're ready to join us for the next part of the question, push play. So the second part says, why does Bud focus so much attention on the library? And in your answer, you're going to write, he focuses so much attention on the library because, and tell me why, he focuses so much attention on the library because, why do you think he focuses so much attention on the library? So push pause, write this sentence frame, and tell me why do you think he focuses so much attention? And once you answer that question, push play, and we will reflect on our learning target together. So here's our reflection at the top of your paper. I want you to write your reflection. How, do you, how did you do today? And our learning target was, I can analyze and write about the descriptive language in the text. How did you do? Four, I could teach this lesson. I easily answered the, both parts of the comprehension question in writing. And I also wrote three imagery examples. Fourth, 
would you give yourself a three? I answered both parts of the comprehension question in writing. And I also wrote two imagery examples. Or would you give yourself a two and say, I answered both parts of the comprehension question in writing. And I also wrote one imagery example or one. I answered one part of the question in writing with one imagery example. How do you think you did? Four, three, two, or one? Well, after you've written down your reflection, thank you for doing this lesson with me. I hope you have a great day.